What is up, gang? Kyle here on a Friday. Love giving you guys a video on Fridays. I uh, wanted to talk to you guys about ARV today, which for those of you that don't know is after repair value. A lot of our calculations on these real estate investments all hinge on one value, what you can sell it for after it's repaired. So I want to try to help you guys figure out how to calculate your ARV yourself and how I kind of do it when we're looking at some of these uh, even rentals or a lot of the ones that you can get at a good discounted price, fix up and then either get appraised or sell for more someday. So I got my little map of Fargo here. We have two interstates in Fargo, I-94 and I-29. And so when I'm looking at ARV, the first thing I usually look for is, well, one, I like to pin the property. So NDSU is right there. We're gonna say that there's a little property pin right here on our property. So let's say this is it, kind of NDSU here. My property's over here in North Fargo. So now I know where that's at. The first thing I'm gonna do which most of you know is location. We're gonna pull location, but I don't wanna pull everything in North Fargo. I'm actually gonna choose a sector to pull from, and this would be my sector on this one. If I was looking at something in a new development in Southwest Fargo, these interstates kinda of, kind of, uh, make quadrants for me. A lot of people I see just pull from that one little neighborhood, and I see a flaw in that. You're missing comparables. Whereas realistically, an appraiser is going to look at any comparable property in this part of town. Maybe not over here, but right here. So that's number one. Number two, which a lot of people get confused with, is actually the style of house. Here's the thing I know that appraisers don't do. They don't compare a two-story house to a one-story rambler. They'll take If you have a two-story house, you have to find all two-story comparables. Sometimes if they don't have quite enough, they'll maybe pull a one and a half story. Like if you have a Rambler house, which this one would be a Rambler, I'm only gonna be looking for Ramblers. So I'm immediately gonna filter by the style of the house. And that eliminates a lot of things in the same neighborhood. Um, you know, a lot of people say, the house next door sold for, well, that might be a different style of house and has no comparable, um, no help for our ARV for this particular house. So that's number two, which a lot of people don't know. Number three is square footage. Square footage is my third biggest one. I want to find houses with similar square footage. In our town, with winters and with, with, without a view of a mountain or a lake, we buy square footage here um, in Fargo. And that might be similar to a lot of other places. So square footage holds a lot of weight in our market. So I'm usually gonna try to narrow down a focus of within 200 total square feet of comparable properties. So this property right here, 1600 square feet, I'm gonna search for comparable properties that are like 1500 and then maybe up to like 1750, probably 1700. And I'm just gonna stay right in that realm for my comparable properties because somebody that's buying a 2000 square foot house is paying a different price than my 1600 square foot Rambler. And I don't wanna get fooled by that when I'm doing my ARV. So then when I do these three criteria, this usually narrows me down to 10 or 15 properties. And then I like to even narrow it down to a smaller box to try to catch those properties. So if I've got 10 to 15 properties, then I feel like I've got my crop of comparables for my ARV. At that point, I learned a valuable lesson early in my career. They said, if you can find one or two great comparables, it's better than 10 or 15 good comparables. So I usually am trying to hunt for that one property that's like, it tells the story of what this property will be when I fix it up. But if I can't find that, usually I'm trying to whittle this list down to three to five. And then I'm going to usually try to average that out or find the one I like best and use that as my ARV value. That's usually going to give you a range in that $10,000 and that's going to get you close enough where you can do your calculations um, to get your after repair value, your ARV. Hope that helped. Hope you like my drawings. Have a good Friday.